Hello. Hello, I've got William from BBC Radio. Yes, we're ready. Thank you. Hello. We're heading to the edge of space. The very edge of space. Good morning. Um, this is very exciting. Uh, and is it just like a, a, a weather balloon, a good old-fashioned weather balloon that this is going up in? Yeah, so it's a helium balloon, which will be a metre or so wide when we inflate it. By the time it gets to 30 kilometres altitude, it will be about nine metres across. And at that point, it will burst, and the cameras and so on that we're sending up will fall back down to Earth by parachute. This is, we're putting in the data down here, so you can see 14.30, so 2.30 on the 28th. This is our ascent speed, our predicted burst altitude, and our predicted descent rate. Now, we can export this as a KML file and open it in Google Earth. So this point here, that's at 100,000 feet. This is where it's going to burst. That is good. So we can see exactly where it's going to go. Well, we've been monitoring the flight path predictions for 10, 11 months, and today I'm really pleased to announce that actually this is the perfect conditions. What's inside here, Rob? Right, so... The DSLR is going to go here. This is the cutout for the lens. This is our 360 camera, which is dangling from here. And what we'll be able to do when we get the footage back from that is look up and see our balloon burst. So this 360 camera wasn't in the original idea. So when we started this project, we were just planning on like one camera, you know. First of all, we found out that the battery life, it's only got about a thousand milliamp hour battery in it, um, which is only enough to last about an hour and a half's worth of flight. Um, so not enough for the full flight up and down. We had to find a solution to that, and then that led us to building this, or led me to building this um, charging circuit to rectify that. We ordered certain components online. It's like custom for the situation. So on the bottom, there's uh, the Raspberry Pi, and then above that, um, it's a pits board, and then the third one up is called a LoRa board, uh, which stands for long range, and that's our radio transmitter, and that's actually got an area coming out the bottom of here. Uh, this is our ground plane antenna, which will transmit um, the coordinates and some live te telemetry data and images back down to Earth, live flight. And then the board on top, as you can see here with the big array of LEDs, is the sense hat. Uh, that's got all different kinds of sensors like uh, pressure, humidity, gyroscope, all that sort of thing. And is that information that's going to be beamed down? The information from the sense hat is going to be, uh, we'll have to recover that when we go to collect okay. it. But there are some basic, like temperature, altitude and pressure will be sent down live. You'll plug that in and you'll just get a massive spreadsheet with yeah. you. We've got a database file which we can then extract into a CSV file and then make all sorts of graphs, you know, how temperature drops over time and pressure and altitude, you know. Over the past, especially three months, we've done so much testing with it. There's a lot that could go wrong, but there's a lot that's went wrong already and then we fixed. It feels like there's quite a lot of hope in a little box. There's a lot of fingers crossed in that box. You sound like you know what you're doing anyway. We wish you a tremendous amount of luck. What can possibly go wrong, Pete? <laughs> this is Apollo Control at 102 hours into the flight of Apollo 11. It's grown quite quiet here in Mission Control. A few moments ago, Flight Director Gene Kranz uh, requested that everyone sit down, get prepared for events that are coming. And he closed with the remark, good luck to all of you. Twelve minutes now until ignition for power descent. Everything's still looking very good at this point. Okay, all flight controllers, gonna go for power descent. Retro, go. Fido, go. Guide, go. Control, go. Telcom, go. GNC, go. Econ, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go for power descent. We're off to a good start. Play it cool. Okay, I'll fly controllers. I'm going around the horn. 
Okay, retro. Go. Vital. Go. Guide. Go. Control. Go. Falcon. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Retro. Go. Vital. Go. Guide. Go. Control. Go. Falcon. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Okay, everybody, let's hang tight and look for landing radar. 75 feet, down and a half. 1202 alarm. 60 seconds. We're, we're going, that flag. We're going, that alarm. 40 feet, down two and a half. It's, if it does three or three, we'll be go. 30 seconds. We've launched and it's gone up and now we're jumping in the chase car, also known as the Chatsmore minibus. Yeah, so when we turned the payload on, when we took it out there and we powered it all up, um, the camera that's receiving live images wasn't um, taking pictures basically. But we, we plugged it in a few times, we found one of the cables, the actual camera module that um, the cable that connects it to the circuit board that it sits on was coming loose. Okay. So part of it clipped up and that, that needs to be down. So I just reconnected that, rebooted it and uh, problem solved. Did it work straight away? Uh, we had to restart it about three times, but we did, it, it, it kept going. When we got it going, it kept going. So um, it, looks, it looks good um, when we launched it. And it kept, it was receiving images, uh, receiving packets as it was going up. And now wherever the balloon is, we're not receiving coordinates or images which is a bit worrying but hopefully if we chase it in a minibus and we get under it get closer to it because you know there's not buildings and stuff in the way we should um we should start receiving again so fingers crossed so we are now driving somewhere towards petworth i'm slightly nervous that we we're not picking up any signal yet despite the traffic arundel we are moving quicker so hopefully we're catching the balloon up yeah. So at some point we will start to pick up the signal. Yeah. yeah, you want to be taking the next left, sir, towards West Burton. Well, at the minute we're at the strongest signal we've ever had, which is, uh, well, so far, which is minus 104. No, it's back up now, isn't it? Yeah. At the moment, what's our geographical location in the van? Uh, between Bigner and West Burton. Right. It is genuinely a better signal, though. A few minutes to go. Until burst. It could burst right now, we don't know exactly, but that's... Roughly. Right, so it's behind us right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if the signal starts going up now, it's not necessarily a bad thing because we're actually heading away from it. Yeah. It's going to go into that corner. Uh, I'm thinking once we get out into the open, I'm gonna, we're going to see a signal, I reckon. What do you think? Are you? Yeah, I think so. So uh, we've been coming through lots of trees, uh, signal's been variable, um, we're hoping to be in a wide open space. When it's within a reasonable range, we should get a decent signal and then we'll be able to track it. Tell us what's going on. We're getting a better signal strength than ever. Oh no. I'm up with the manual here. I've got the manual for the piece of software. Where is it, Kieran? I just saw it. No, I've lost it. It came over this way. Oh no, I can see it. I've got eyes. I think that's it, lads. Oh, look at this, look! Oh. I see it! Yes! Yes! <laughs> I can see it! Adam! Whoever's got the pie, can we get that bad boy pointing out there? The flight of Apollo 11. Where is it? It's grown quite quiet here in Mexico. Control. That's a bird. A few moments ago, that's a bird. Gene crashed. 
I mean, if there's a possibility that we don't get it today, yeah. someone will find it at some point. And hopefully phone. It's got a number on, so... This is our predicted landing site, as you can see on the predictor there. And it should be coming at us from the east, so we should see it coming from that way. OK. Um, so we're all going to get out and have a look for it now. Goggles on. Now, uh, just before the news at 8 o'clock, we give you a brief update on the weather balloon uh, from Chatsmoor Catholic High School. Do you remember this? The, we, we talked about them sort of sending it off into the, uh, into the atmosphere, and it's gone missing. When it came down, they thought it was going to get around Petworth, and they have been looking for it ever since. Unfortunately, they're still looking. Yesterday... They went up in a plane to see if they could have uh, find it, and uh, we, a small plane, obviously. Uh, Pete Clark, science teacher, has the latest. Did you manage to find it yet, Pete? Good morning. No, fortunately, we didn't. But oh, um, you're throwing yeah, everything at this, aren't you? That's right. I mean, it really was looking for a needle in a haystack, but uh, we're absolutely determined to um, to continue this project one way or another. So. In the meantime, we've, we've actually got the go-ahead from a very supportive head teacher and governing body to uh, uh, launch again in, in, in the autumn term so that the project is, is very much still alive. Oh, right, you're going to have another go. So, uh, one of the things we, we teach our students at Chatsmore is uh, the power of resilience and never giving up. So this is a really good demonstration to our students that actually the scientific method, you know, people do get things wrong. Uh, look at Edison. He, he found 10,000 things that didn't work, but he uh, eventually invented the light bulb. So we're, we're very determined to get it right. I love that. I love the fact that you have turned this into a learning uh, moment. <laughs> uh, so well well done. That. And, and you never know, it could still be found, couldn't it? So if you oh. find a parachute sort of thing in the Petworth area, we think, or maybe somewhere else uh, sort of nearby in West Sussex, get in touch and we will pass you on to Pete there. Uh, but they're going to have another go in the autumn. Um, it's BBC Sussex, Sussex. News on the Way.